Hi everyone, my name is Oswin and welcome to Basically Watches. I'm a watch enthusiast and have been collecting watches since I was a teenager. Absolutely love the hobby. This is my first ever video review and today I will be reviewing the Filippo Loretti Ascari Grand Prix GP 1953. I know, it's a bit of a mouthful. I have a few pieces in my collection, some luxury and some affordable. And I always wanted to add a two-tone watch to my collection, but I wasn't sure if it is for me or not. I looked around for a while and couldn't find something that was two-tone with a chronograph and under $500. Until one day I came across an ad from Filippo Loretti on Facebook. I looked at their website uh, and left it at that. Didn't think much of it. I must say I have to give them credit for their marketing. It is on point and they kept retargeting me with offers. So I decided to test the waters with a super affordable but aesthetically good looking watch, which is the Filippo Loretti Ascari GP15 1953. A large portion of my collection is made up of pieces that are rich in horological history. So why did I decide to buy a Filippo Loretti? Well, before I get into that, without further ado, let's look at the watch itself. So. This is the watch box that it came in. It's a triple watch box. It's got a nice little, you know, sort of welcome card that says you're awesome and thank you for your purchase. The watch box itself uh, has a nice little engraving of the watch on it and it feels nicely packaged. And yeah, that's the watch. So let's look at what's inside the box. So take this out. It's got some spare links. It's got a polishing cloth and it's also got the instruction manual. So I'll just put that aside and we'll have a look at the watch itself. So yeah, as I said, that's the watch. So uh, why, what was my biggest deciding factor in purchasing this particular watch? Well, one of the biggest deciding factors was uh, the movement. It's running Seiko VK64 Mecha Quads movement, which is uh, which is a pretty decent movement, and it's very similar to the movement that runs in this particular Dan Henry Gran Turismo. The Dan Henry runs a VK63 movement, and I absolutely I got this watch a couple of years back, and absolutely love it. So yeah, uh, because of the moment, I thought, you know what, give it a go and let's see what the watch is like. So uh, the first impressions of the watch, it feels like a nice quality watch. Uh, uh, you know, it feels nice and solid, aesthetically good looking. It's got a gold crown, gold pushers, two-tone pushers. Two gold bezel, uh, with uh, which is fixed, with a tachymeter on it. And... And yeah, two-tone bracelet. And the back has uh, some nice artwork on it too, which I'll talk about it a bit later. So yeah, overall, uh, looks-wise, it looks quite good and feels quite good as well. The bracelet itself, it feels nice and solid. It's heavy, but uh, the only thing I dislike about it, it feels a bit jiggly, which, uh, you know, I suppose at the price point, it's not too bad. The clasp itself is a double locking clasp. It's got the Filippo Loretti engraving on it, if you can see it that, and it has got a nice click to it. It feels nice and secure. The chronograph pushers, they feel nice and crisp, and that's largely attributed to the Seco Mecha Quads movement. So it's sort of got that sweeping hand action, which I like, and yeah, it resets nicely to zero, which is nice and clean. The date wheel itself has a, sorry, that's the time. Oh, let me just move it to the date wheel. Yeah, so the date feels nice and clean as it's changing along. It doesn't feel like it's uh, moving across too much. And yeah, so it's a quads movement, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Pretty impressed with it. I showed it to my wife as well, and she quite likes it. She's not a big watch person herself, but, you know, she supports my hobby, which is a good thing, and she thinks it was a good-looking watch as well. So what were the other deciding factors? Well, uh, the other deciding factor was they offer you a 100% no risk money back guarantee. Now, I can't comment too much on that because obviously I haven't tried to, you know, get a, re a return and get my money back or anything. But I guess we'll just have to take their word on it. But uh, that's it's good to know that, uh, you know, they offer that. I haven't read up too much about it to hear, you know, to know what other people's experiences have been. They also offer an easy 90-day returns. Uh, so yeah, you're not a fan of the watch, then you can return it within the 90-day period. And it also comes with a 10-year warranty, which I think is pretty good for the price point. 
We talked about first impressions. Now, the watch itself, it's a homage to Alberto Ascari, who is an Italian racing driver and two times Formula One world champion who raced with Ferrari at the time. And like I said, uh, the case back features Alberto Ascari's car. I'll try and get that in focus. Yeah, so it's got that nice artwork there and it's got the Ascari logo uh, embossed there as well and the Filippo Loretti writing. I believe this is limited to 1953 timepieces, so it is a limited edition. So those were my first impressions. Now, whilst it might give you the impression that it is an Italian brand, it's not. Filippo Loretti was founded by a pair of Lithuanian brothers, and based on their website, watches are assembled in the Shenzhen province in China. They did say Hong Kong, but I believe it is mainland China. That's uh, in terms of overall watch, uh, you know, the look and feel and what are my first impressions on the watch. Now, what I didn't like about it. So the first thing I didn't like was the wait time. So uh, on their website, it does say that their watches are made to order. And I placed my order in September and only received it now. So almost uh, three months now since uh, it took to get to me. The other thing that I didn't like was they pitched themselves as a luxury brand or a luxury watch well it's not i don't think it is i think it's more an affordable fashion brand more in the category of uh, you know daniel wellington movement watches vincero and so forth so yeah it's a good entry level fashion brand watch i would say the other thing i was in the fan of was their frequent price drops so when i purchased this watch uh, i purchased it i paid about 309 dollars uh, that's australian dollars excluding postage which is roughly about 229 US dollars and they're currently selling at 219 Australian dollars which is roughly about 157 US dollars so that's almost a 70 dollar price drop which which I must say for a limited edition watch they kept dropping the price but sort of depreciates the value I mean not that I'm, I'm interested in the resale value of it but I just don't I think if you're running a limited edition watch you shouldn't be dropping prices that's just my personal opinion the other thing I wasn't impressed with it was they said once you place your order they said we'll keep you constantly posted and updated I didn't receive any single update in fact I had to follow them up all the time the only time I got an update without following up was when they actually shipped the watch and they sent me a tracking number the other thing I wanted to comment about was I'll, I also paid for expedited shipping, which was slightly more shipping in, instead of the free shipping, and uh, it still took over 15 days to get here. Now, I can't say that that's entirely their fault. It's also the shipping company and, you know, the time of the year, because of, obviously December is quite heavy on uh, postage and so forth. So I, I don't think that's completely under uh, their control. So, so yeah, I guess, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. So let's move into the specs of the watch. Uh, so yeah, the specifications, uh, it's obviously made out of stainless steel. Uh, it's got the Seiko VK64 movement, like, like I mentioned, uh, two-tone. It's got a sapphire-coated mineral glass. It's not exactly sapphire crystal, so they either a sapphire-coated mineral glass. So I guess it has some sort of scratch resistance, but uh, I wouldn't say, I, I'm not too sure if it's 100% uh, scratch resistant or not. It's got a water resistance of 100 meters. Uh, the case diameter is 42 millimeters, which I quite like. That's my sweet spot uh, for watches between 40 and 42 for me personally. Uh, case thickness, the, it's about 12.9 millimeters. And the lug, uh, lug width, I believe, is 20 millimeters, which is pretty good. Uh, it, I mean, it's proportionate to the size of the watch. How does it look on the wrist? So I'll just put that on the wrist quickly. It, I mean, I didn't have to do any link adjustments or anything, which is a good thing. And so, yeah, that's what it looks like on the wrist. Feels nice and comfortable, looks good on the wrist. It feels comfortable, I don't feel any pinching in the bracelet or anything. So, yeah, so far, happy with the watch itself. I mean, particularly at the price point that I got it for. So, yeah, at this stage, that's all I have to say about it. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did enjoy it please give us a like and subscribe to our channel and yeah i'm looking forward to doing another video in a few weeks time to see uh you know how the watch has grown on me what my if my impression has changed and so forth and i might even do a comparison video with the dan henry because they feature similar sort of movement thanks everyone see ya bye for now